And we're live. And good morning. It is Agile Ventures Euroscrum and Peer Hookup. And here we are. And we've got Brian and Pavel and Pete and uh, somebody with a yellow. Oh, is that, is that me? No. There's somebody else. Who is that person? And I can't find my mouse quick enough to mouse over. It's Yarrow. Hello, Yarrow. And myself. And here we are. So I should press the screen share button. I've got to make this mouse cursor bigger because it takes too long on three screens. Uh, let's get that going up and get, ideally, let's get this in there. So, um, on the SARS book note, um, so that, that's one thing, uh, yeah, I'm working on the index of the SARS book for the uh, Amanda and Dave, and that's something that we could distribute, and I've got that all working, and I want to try and give, I want to try and get people who want to be involved in this, which I think believe includes Pete and Thomas and Marion access to the right repo, and um, Armando's working through. You know, he's obviously concerned about the security of the content, so we're, and that's that's ongoing. Anyway, I just mentioned that because we had SARS book up there. Um, let us talk about EduChat. We had uh, a session yesterday. Um, myself and Brian and Michael were there, which is kind of a DevOps session, and we did make some some progress actually, um, which I was quite pleased with. I was just going to show. I'd, actually, I noticed one of the things. They're talking about edX. Um, uh, I always do this, right? You know, I've got a live course. Right? This is my uh, computer organization course. And I, you know, add, I added here, like, experimentally week four for us to test the new new thing. And b by default, the release date that it gets when you open it is, like, it's the same as the start date. So what happens is my students end up being able to see, you know, this, like, hanging week four and, like, oh, what's that? That's kind of weird kind of thing, which it shouldn't be released until this day. Okay. Um, so, I don't know. That's, I don't know. These are the ongoing things we want to get fixed in edX, but that's not, well, I don't know. I mean, that's, there was a few lot of people last night in the open session talking about Python. Um, it would be great if we could somehow try and get the Python edX. The whole of edX is open source in Python. It would be great if we were kind of involved in that. But anyway, uh, going back to ed, EduChat, what we did was we were playing around with the, um, the server and uh, we were able to basically create this. I don't know if we see that all right. But so what we did is we used Derek's existing um, bit of JavaScript and pulling it down. And uh, Brian pointed out we could, you know, in the div, we could specify a particular chat room. And then so I think if I've still got the, uh, uh, the appropriate window somewhere, or maybe I don't, or maybe that I shouldn't fixate on it, but um, we're basically able to create new chat rooms at will on the old server. So that's quite pleasing. Um, I don't think I have the, the thing to hand, but there we go. Um, and yeah, so I was very pleased with that progress. Um, any other thoughts or input on EduChat at the moment? I guess not. Um, yeah, uh, I hope we... Uh, we may or may not hear from Shmuel then. Actually, here is, here's the code that does this, uh, I believe. Uh, yeah, or I, I've kind of, that was the, this, this was the chat thing. I, I guess I've lost the connection to it. Um, somebody else joined us? We've got Dima with us as well. Excellent. Um, anyway, so that does a simple bit of uh, JavaScript. Okay. Well, I shouldn't do that. No, stay on, stay on target. Stay on target. Stay on target. Uh, so I, I'm now unblocked. We've done we've done a series of um, things on this task. I can now potentially go off and create new chat rooms for the other box where it would be easy. Thank you, Brian. Uh, that's EduChat. Moving on from EduChat, um, let us just hit local support. Had big day of local support pairing sessions yesterday. Um, I ended up. I've got a. Uh, yeah, first we've got. I think the first round of this targeted email thing now ready to go. I need to test on the server. I'm meeting the client in just under one and a half hours, um, and I'm going to hope to show that and a couple of other pull requests um, that John's got for for the admin space to the client. Um, any particular business on local support? Yeah, I mean local support. You know, quite quiet. We've got you know lots of little outstanding bits there. I'm uh, greetings, Thomas. Uh, Thomas, I guess you probably haven't had time to work on your um, local support. No, but I will, I will today. Oh, good stuff. Yeah, I should be seeing the client in about 90 minutes. Um, so unless there's another business on local support, um, I'll just briefly mention Funniest Computer. We had um, Dave and Liz, who are two Funniest Computer entrants, you know, who joined us, and my brain shredded several gears trying to, like, 
talk to a group that comprised people from so many different projects. Um, but I've now created like a, a funniestcomputerever.org domain and set up an. Uh, I need to give um, uh, the critical critical action for me here is I need to give um, uh, give Dave and Liz access to email. So anyway, we'll see. I mean, in some ways, I think that. Dave, Dave and Liz might need to take some of our programming courses courses um, before we can uh, really get them. I, I don't know. The, the, this whole it's a it's a sort of a stub here. This like the whole crowdsource voting thing. Anyway, any any thoughts on funniest computer? Any business there? I assume we can happily skip over the Odin project for the moment. Although I'm you know spreading that around with more different people. We've talked about SARS book. I'm missing. Auto graders. Um, any uh, updates on auto graders? Yarrow, I think I missed you in the yesterday afternoon scrum. I did review all of your uh, stories, and they all look good. They all made sense to me. Um, any thoughts? Yeah, we have. Uh, good morning. We have finished the story for setting up the homeworks. Uh, the homeworks repo for homework zero. Mm -hmm. um, I was just. I was just preparing the pull request there, uh, but I need. I need another half an hour or so oh, just to probably start things off. Uh, if you look at my screen now, I just yep. wanted to show what we've, what we've done. Yeah. Uh, the thing which is on my screen now, the green yep. thing, well, basically, mm -hmm. we have managed to, like, um, well, now we have a table for all the specs we want to run oh, okay. in the cucumber scenario. So in here, we can specify the title of the test. Like, you see we have specs sure. for solutions. We can mm -hmm. specify the test subject, the spec, and the expected result. Fantastic. So that would that would clone the rag, uh, install it, run bundle install, and then run all the specs according to this table. Excellent. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, so we're ready. To, we're ready to move on to homeworks uh, one and two, and we'll do that today. Okay. Excellent. Before you do that, can you send me the draft of your bio? Sure. Sure. Yeah, and it's ready. Actually, I will send it in uh, half an hour or so. I look forward to reading it. Fantastic. Okay. Right. Any other business on edu chat? On this is not edu chat. On auto graders. No. Good show. Uh, so I think that's covered everything, with the exception. Well, I guess we've got the the new project we're talking about, which is the training TA thing. I guess oh, maybe this is a good time to just jump mention that. So I what I've so I have further discussions with Armando and with edX for the training TA certificate. Um, I, they are basically saying it may be challenge, it may be time consuming to get approval from either Berkeley or edX to get their names on the certificate. Uh, what Amanda has suggested is that we make it an ESAS, which is the Engineering Software as a Service, so of course Amanda and Dave's textbook, and make it a um, you know uh, an ESAS certificate because we can just sort of you know Amanda could say because um, you know everybody loves the idea. They're just you know they sit. Armando and the next people they say sit within this big huge bureaucracy which you know in, I guess it's designed to stifle innovation or something I don't know well no maybe it's designed to stop people like doing bad things I don't know one day we'll work out what bureaucracy is for and um, then we'll all be happy but um, yeah so I, mean, I made a provisional list actually I mean uh, Pavel sounds like you're happy to take the lead on this and um, you know we need to I guess the first thing you know would be great you know create, create a name we could even start, like, rather than creating the information in the um, uh, Google site, we could do it in the, you know, the, web, the website one production. Mm -hmm. You know, add the project there. I mean, it can be a temporary name for the moment. Um, and I got a, I just made a list, I believe, of like a, a rough list of the things that I thought could go in. I mean, Armando was saying, oh yes, we must have, um, you know, a list of what people are being certified. Four and I was like, yes, absolutely. Here's a list, um, uh, which I'm just looking for. And this was my rough list here. But obviously, this needs to be worked on and thought about. And um, yeah, I mean, uh, what I guess we critically need is a tracker. But so here, here's the list here. Um, I guess we need new chat rooms and different things. Can you see that? Well, we, I guess, we don't have to get into the you know discussions of this. But you know, any any random thoughts? Feel free to throw them out. Uh, hey there, Michael. You're up early. I guess what I will do is immediately create a project. What do we call? Do we call this like this is like 
I'm going to call this ESAS training program for the moment. Uh, publicly visible, create the project. Um, I'm kind of, I mean, I'm sort of, you know, partly this list that I'm creating is, is thinking about the things that the teams exist currently do, which is, you know, responding to people in the forums and in the chat, but really I'm less interested in their abilities there. I mean, that's great. I think we should, you know, address that, but I'm more interested in their abilities for managing live sessions. That's the key thing. Um, and so uh, we, I guess there's, uh, we need, a, I guess, a curriculum for this. So uh, I'm going to put this list into here. Da -da -bum 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 uh, that's a draft. Okay. So boom, boom, boom. That's a, and I'm just going to put that in as a chore in the first instance. So uh, who wants, I guess the critical thing here is who wants in on this project? Dev, obviously, Pavel. Anybody, anybody else? I think, Thomas, were you saying you were particularly interested in this one? Yeah, yes, I am interested in this one, yes. Anybody else want to go in on the track? Obviously, it doesn't have to be now. Okay, yeah, I'll jump in on that at some point. That's Pete. Uh, well, yeah, and Pete, by the way, your uh, concept there, where is it, is it? You're, you're still brainstorming on the, um, uh, you know, uh, Computers for Kids concept, yeah. but yeah, you know, uh, it's never too early to take a, to make a pivotal tracker, I say. Um, that can, you know, scaffold your brainstorming process. Uh, I've got Lucy here, so I'd like to get her input. Um, yeah. If uh, I paste into the chat the blog that I wrote about this, um, I want to make a code academy for kids. So right. I've sat with Lucy and my and my twins, um, and, and we've been through the HTML track for uh, mm -hmm. Academy, and uh, yes. they they've learned a lot. They've learned HTML. They can write their own HTML page now. Well done, Lucy. But uh, it, it's a little bit um, dry wading through the code academy, and I have to read all the instructions to them. And um, there's not a lot of interactivity. If you scroll down there, you can um, that. I think Scratch is great because immediately you think of visual and it's like a puzzle. You have to put the lines of code together mm -hmm. to make um, make Scratch the cat do something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So so that was a lot more interesting to start off with. But then you get wading into object oriented stuff and and you have mm -hmm. these classes. Each character has its own class sort of thing, although they don't call it that. Right. That's structured. Um, so I, I want to put to, together something that combines those two with, um, you know, some of the elements of the flash games that that they much prefer to play during our computing lessons. <laughs> right, right. Yes. Uh, at the end of doing some some programming, we always go to to the BBC um, Children's BBC site or the Disney yes. site, and we play some flash games. Mm -hmm. All about drag and drop. What, what's your favourite game to play with? Sophia, what do you do in that game? We get a dress. All right, it's a dressing up game called Sophia on uh, on the Disney site. Oh, Disney site. Yeah. So it's it's all about drag and drop and mm -hmm. um, uh, and making your 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 vision come into mm. reality. So uh, it's it's a way to incorporate that. Just throwing it out there. So if anyone has. Oh sure. Kids. Yeah. No. Well, I I have kids and we they do play a lot of games on the Lego. The Lego site. Um, looks like yeah, there's a lot of different Sophia games actually here for uh, on the um, Disney site. But cool. Yes, I'm. Mean, I'm very interested in this. I mean, I kind of I had my kids use Scratch and Alice, and um, as we talked about before, um, and I think that, that what, what's what's fascinating. I mean, my, my kids at the moment uh, they are particularly focused on a game that their mother. Does not like so much, um, which is uh, and actually the, the the Lego people have been using. Um, you know, I mean, the Lego got all these crossovers. It's just it's just insane. Um, the uh, I wonder if I can just find. Uh, I mean, that they love this. Oh, was it gone? 
Can I find it quickly enough? It's the quest for R2-D2. <laughs> yeah, we love Lego as well, but we haven't played any of the Lego game. Right, yes. Uh, oh, here we go. But um, I, I have to say, I, I show this partly because I do... Okay, yeah, permission to run, run this time. Um, the... Um, okay. The I you I teach my I teach a game programming course and I you know all my students do Unity. Oh, as I mentioned to you, um, Pete, there is this um, there's 3D game programming for kids. Did you see that that book? Uh, no, I didn't see that. Yeah, I think I posted it in Skype for you, but this one I would um, strongly recommend. Uh, all oh, yeah. Anyway, so I mean this is the stuff. The stuff I just want to show you this thing here. Um, oh, I, mean, I guess I have to get a character and so on. Oh. Uh, but it basically it has the whole, um, you know, it's all basically you get, you get to run around in an environment in Unity and you're basically you have a Lego lightsaber and all this other stuff and whatever. Um, it's just it's just I think it's quite remarkable um, what they've done with Unity because we, we I, and I teach using the same course. But what what and I want to turn the volume down on that. But I think that the thing that I find interesting about this is like the game is so gripping, you know, the like. Just to show you what's going on. I mean, you know, not that you necessarily want to see this, but um, yeah. We, the funny they, thing is, oh, go on. the uh, the Lego Wii games, uh, Indiana Jones and Star Wars. Oh, okay. Yeah. What's striking with this is this is available for like free. Yeah. You know, basically, you look. You're. Up. This is a clone of a commercial game that Lego released a few years ago. And you can like look. Anyway, you get the idea. Yeah, you're blocking with the lightsaber. Yeah, yeah which I, I just, I've been hearing. Thomas, you love like Star Trek more than Star Wars. But anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, come on. Yeah, I, I, I can do my share of, of, of Star Wars anyway. So. Yeah. No problem. The, the, the uh, but my kid, my kids love it. My, I mean, I think it's, I think it's better than them going around shooting. But I, this, I, I, this, I, I, this one seems to be a clone of a, of a commercial game that they released a few years ago because I, I re yeah. uh, recognized the interface and my kids were playing that and I paid, you know, several hundred crowns for it. Indeed. Uh, and I'm, it's I'm free very now. Much, I'm, I'm enjoying not paying for it. Um, I mean, that's and, the remarkable thing about making it available for free. But uh, ju uh, just a few remarks uh, uh, in the uh, uh, concerning the. The course for kids. I was uh, yesterday evening speaking to to that girl that I uh, has at a potential client, and mm. for for this, and she's very interesting. But she she wants to target you know uh, ten to thirteen, fourteen years old. Mm. Uh, so that's one thing. And another thing is if we would target younger people, uh, then the you know the visual uh, you know building blocks kind of approach to to programming is is uh, is great. But there is a I don't know how how old Scratch is. If it's a few years. Yeah, I think it's like it's a little uh, old. Yeah, but the thing is now, uh, everything that we should we would do targeting young kids should be able to work to be accessible through tablets. Sure. Uh, and and th that's that's a challenge, and I I'm not quite sure that that Scratch is 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 uh, is uh, compatible with with iPads and yeah. and, and you know. Uh, the mobile browsers, I mean. Uh, so, so that's 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 a challenge. I think um, we need well, to. That, consider. Well, that certainly would make an interesting mobile or tablet pro project for Azure Ventures. I think. Mm. To, uh, it would certainly be interesting as well. The, the interesting, the, the funny thing, the problem that I have with tablets is that, you know, I, I want to have my kids do more educational things on tablets, like the um, uh, Shimon Shokan, who is the great author of this textbook that I'm using for computer organization. He's created mm -hmm. this new mathematical learning thing on the tablet. The problem is on the tablet, right, is it's got, I've got all of the other games in. So if I give them the tablet, right, they're off playing the other games almost immediately. It's kind mm. of almost like I have more control on the, the laptop because mm. they don't necessarily know how to navigate to the other games so easily. But that's, I mean, that's maybe a problem, a personal issue for me with my family. But, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I think that there's, you know, the, the, and of course there's room to split it out into multiple projects, but that's interesting to hear. So, Thomas, what you're saying is that the, the, the client that you've got, she's particularly interested in, in games targeting at the 13, 14, and 15 age. Well, well she's, not, she's not interested in games. Well, at all. Well, learning to well, yeah, learning, learning programs, you know, that, that right. and, and she's also uh, very keen on targeting female uh, Right, you know, students, because she, she wants to design a, a, a program that yeah. that makes you know computer science interesting to 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 young girls, yes. basically. That's sure. that's her her input on this. Uh, yes, so, although yeah. although Pete seems extremely well placed since he has you know uh, Lucy and what's Lucy's twin called? Lucy and Maya. Lucy and Maya. Uh, yeah. They're seven, so 
for their seven. So you know, I mean, you know, it'd probably take us a couple of years to build and things sensible. So you know, they're, 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 they'll, they'll gradually move into the demographic. And I like the idea of doing a, a mobile first web application for this. Yeah, yeah, that 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 would that would also be. Interesting. I'll just show you. That I I have to mention this. So uh, along with that book, the three D game program for kids, um, you should check out. That this is the the thing that is that they've got this ICE editor. So basically, it's JavaScript. You're learning JavaScript, uh, but you. Oh, I should get with a simpler one. But so this is the game that you end up building over the first eight eight chapters. If I now I now forget if I get to hide code like this, this is the game that you build, and you have to kind of like, basically the trees are, you know, doing this. But you. The the uh, the fantastic thing about this, I want to find out if I got uh, no cancel, open. Uh, if we just look for a simple, oh shapes like, there we go, spinning multi sided like like this, right? Basically, you've got, you know, entirely in the browser. You don't have to worry about anything or file saving. It's all saving using lo local support, and you can then like potentially here, like if we change, uh, that's the color there. If I change this to, um, oh I don't know, like so. And then move away. It will, yeah. Then it's between grey, maybe like command. What I do here, but other things. But it potentially, I don't really know how the. the it, it will, it will update these things in real time. I've probably broken it now. Oh well. But you, you know that you get the idea. It's about a, a live code editor with you know that has immediate impact changes on the thing that you're drawing. Which um, I, I had my eight-year-old son work through, and he found. You know, somewhat interesting, but still, you know, nothing compared to the games like we've got in these different sites. So, I mean, I, th I think that the, the the task, in some ways, really is like, can can we make it so that the programming thing is just as exciting as playing the game? Can we compete with the games? I mean, I wonder. Maybe not. Um, that would be a good challenge to work, work towards. Yeah. What it reminds me of, oh, brain. There was the startup startup. What it reminds me of. Is so the startup engineering course last year. One of the people who did really well in that was oh where was it Code and Conquer. Did you guys see this site? I don't think they actually built anything, but this got a lot of attention. Like um, that was not particularly for for the younger kids necessarily, but this was like a war game. The idea was is that you're basically it's like a you know game like Settles of Catan or whatever, but you're coding the artificial intelligence behind what your guys are doing. And you're then competing with other people, and you know it's all, you know. And the interesting thing about this is, I think, you know, having not built it or whatever, is just with the graphics and with the concept, they got a lot of interest of, you know, combining the sort of the game and the coding side of things. Anyway, mm. the conversations could go on, but I, I would certainly say um, to Pete, do you know, create a people tracker and just start create and a, and a chat room and start creating the things that you know facilitate more conversations. Um, on the ESAS training program, just going back to that briefly, I've, I've put in, you know, I need to create an, ed, 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 an edX edge course for that, get the timeline sorted out. Um, we'll, we'll hit that again um, in the afternoon scrum. I think the critical thing, just finally to review, is any website one issues? Uh, well, yes, but yeah, we, we could have a discussion about that. It could potentially take some time. Okay. So it depends well, I think, if you I wanna, think yeah. You I mean, know. I've got a client meeting in less in just over an hour, so I probably shouldn't. You guys could certainly have a discussion. I think I should probably start doing local support client meeting mm. prep. Mm. Um, yeah. So I guess up up to, up to you. We kind of. I mean, I, I you know, um, at, it's it's terrible because I, I'd love to promote discussion on all of these things, but yeah, we just have to be careful about our time constraints. It depends on you. You know, we can take it now, or we can open a new hangout, or just continue. You know. We, well, why don't we, why don't you continue there, and I'll go and get my um, beverage, and uh, you know, the, I guess my, my input not critically needed. Uh, and not unless you want to accept those two stories, but uh, that that mm, I could maybe do that fast for you. So we've got pagination. Only five. Oh, yes. I'm not sure that this is a feature that I wanted, um, but that's another story. Uh, so. This list of projects. It's uh, actually you cannot forget that you you cannot accept those stories yet. Okay. Okay. Because well, they haven't pushed it up to production, so forget about it. I'm sorry. Okay. I mean, I would just mention that I don't know that I see pad that I see this as very 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 low priority paginating. Yeah. Paginating but it's, it's been in the backlog and it's been voted on, you know. So. Right, but did the client ask for it? <clears throat> 
Now, when you say that, I, I I'm not quite sure. You know, it's, no. it's been because well, it's, I, it's it's it it it's been we discussed it during a discussion in a discussion with you know potentially we have a lot of projects and we have to break it up. Yes, so the, the, it it came up to to. Um, it came up in a discussion, so yes. and we we felt that pagination would be a certain, you know, a way to fix the problem with too many projects on on right. one single page. So that's why we created the feature. We worked on it. So yeah, the, the, yeah, you didn't specifically ask for it, but no. you know, there was an implied need for you know cleaning well, I, up I, I the, the UI. Well, I think I think it's fascinating. I, I would say that um, you know, and of course in this project because you're all stakeholders, you know, it's not the case that. Um, you know, religiously, everything that's created should be because I've I've requested it. Uh, although, I, w I would say it is a problem with project and with feature creep. So I mean, um, John uh, in local support, you know, kind of had an idea about a functionality that he thought that he would like to see and sort of added it, and it created a sort of a complex bug that's taken a long time to fix and so on. And so I think, uh, again, I, I don't know. I, I guess I've sort of said this before. At the risk of repeat, I mean, I'll just keep on saying it every every week for the rest of my life. But because I love saying it, but this complexity is the killer. We will die. We will expire under complexity. I, I, I maybe I'm wrong. I feel that you guys do not wield the scalpel of simplicity with the enthusiasm that I do. Mm -hmm. Perhaps I am incorrect, but it seems to. I think you. I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm deluding myself. I I feel that what you need to be with yourself is rigorous about seeing the assumptions and removing them. I mean, I, I, I fail in this all my, I believe, all, all the time. You know, it's about not making things any more complex. I would say, if, particularly if we refer back to uh, local support, um, we also had the, the same thing in local support, and we had um, Sam Pretty implemented, and this is what we sort of assumed that we sort of needed it, we needed the pagination. Sam Pretty implemented a, quite a complex JavaScript um, thing that, that, that actually ultimately didn't do what the client wanted. I mean, it, it kind of, you know, at the beginning we were sort of showing it, and we had this like, you know, you had like ten of the the things, and you scrolled down, and it kind of went tick 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 tick, and it was kind of like, oh yes, we've got this an infinite scroll going on. It actually turned out to be, I mean, that's a, you know, of course it's no guarantee that these things will cause problems, but somehow they often seem to. I mean, everything that you make can potentially have a knock on effect on the problem. You're hoping that it won't, but it can do, and. You know, ultimately, we had to spend extra time removing it in order. We now have this infinite scroll, basically, because we load all of the, we load the a thousands, or is it like six hundred organizations, all completely into here in the first instance, right? And what it, mm -hmm. the, the the interesting thing in particular was previously when we had the pagination load going up and down in there was that that re did, really didn't work with the client's laptop, and it actually the simpler solution, you know, which was like less technically elegant and so on, whatever. Actually turned out to be better, and would have. I mean, but maybe we had to go through the process to discover it. As regards the um, list of projects, things it's the kind of thing like, you know, don't try and solve the problem until we actually face it. I would say. I mean, I, I think I, I've I've spent a long time in Rails projects, you know, beating my head against pagination and issues that have have come up from it. I would say, categorically, this is the kind of thing that wielding the scalpel of simplicity. You could say we just don't have to do now. We can just put that. You know, in the back thing, but you know, and I say that not as a criticism of you guys. It's like I've made exactly this this issue. I've come exactly through this thing in projects before, and it's you know in earlier Rails projects and in local support and so on. Um, I, I just, I guess, um, but I might be wrong this time. You know, it might be that this turns out to be absolutely critical, and we, you know, for the look and feel of the page, it needs to be you know a small amount. Anyway, that's my. I'll, if you want to see, if, if you want to see it live, just go to website one uh, develop, just so so we know what the, what what we're talking about here. Sure. Uh, but but you know in 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 fairness, I mean this the the thing came up and uh, yep. the story was was created and yep. somebody took a lead on it and and developed it and that was Marcelo yep. together with me with uh, sure. me me and 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 uh, yeah and John. oh and, and that looks nicely implemented and I'm you know I'm sure I'm sure it's lovely I, I guess it's just and know, and and, and, and the, I know what you're talking about but the thing here is that that we we did this because we 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 wanted the the interface to. And the UI to be, be, become simpler, you know, so we don't have to to to, to scroll through long, uh, you know, blah blah. So. Right, but but no, but note that the way we we did the same thing for local support by doing mm. this, and what mm. that means is that you don't have to click. It means you can immediately scroll up and down and see more of the things on the same page, you know. And every okay. click is, you know, one level of redirection that people don't get to later on. Mm. Uh, so anyway, I mean, it, 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 it's done. Um, I, I think it's just something to. Uh, consider. I mean, I think you know. Obviously, we're you know in the projects here. 
to learn. And so, you know, you, I'm, you know, implementing a given feature is like absolutely that's a great learning experience. This is the this is the problem that like you know uh, I've been recently rewatching the beginning of the of uh, one six nine lectures and they talk about you know the like the five billion dollar FBI casebook failure and these sorts of things. The the the, the problem with projects is you know about there's so many things that you could do and you think are nice and this and whatever and it's like can you stay laser focused to link everything that you you're you're doing to something that's sort of like a really you know, like it, it should be can we get away without this for the moment. Mm. Kind of thing. Anyway, that's it's just that's just a perspective um, that I hope you will continue to ponder as other features get generated. Mm. Mm. Uh, just just a, I, I just a quick reply to that from an, from another perspective. It's mm. like you know because we have we have quite a lot of people who are working on these projects. Yes, uh, and it's it's the reason uh, th there's another point to this, and and it's like Marcelo asked me what what, what can I work on, you know? Sure. And given his and because he wanted to take a lead on something, yeah. he he hasn't done it before. And yes. given given the, the the level of his knowledge and his experience with with stuff, you know, uh, we were browsing through the icebook and backlog for a for a feature that is fairly easy yeah. for him to 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 actually implement. And that's that's the the cho choice was uh, made to 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 give him that uh, that feature because we want mm -hmm. him to learn and just I mean make him uh, do more than being an observer and and sure. uh, you know sometimes a driver. To actually take a lead on something, so yes. so I see out of out of out of the perspective of of, of, mm. of like kind of you know project manager, uh, you know, it's my responsibility that that people mm. also you know grow under you know in sure. this totally. and 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 I'm very proud of, of Marcelo because he overcame a lot of obstacles in this mm. story, and I'm very proud of him uh, doing that, and I'm also proud of him working together with John, mm. uh, you know, on this on this feature because it was fairly um, hard for them to test it. They yes. had to learn a lot of stuff to, in order to do it. So uh, you know, it's it's yes, of course we we can keep things simple in order to be to be very you know to to optimize you know all the processes, all the workflows and stuff. But we can't forget that this is also a learning process for people, and people have to grow. So out of that perspective, I think this was a good this was a good decision yes. to, to make. Uh, yeah, yes, no, that sounds like a you know that th those are those are all excellent reasons, and I think there's no, there's no I would hope that there's no need for you to see if defend yourself there it seems like a no 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 I, i'm defending actually i'm defending the the the, the whole the whole uh, I, well not defending this is the wrong word but I, I i really need to give marcelo a credit you know for, for yeah. doing this job because it's it's uh, it made him uh, yes. take a few steps forward and that is actually for me personally yes. uh, more important than 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 uh, perhaps living up to the uh, the bit, the know, well, no, the that, picture, that, you know, well, absolutely. The, 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 the person is more important for me, actually. In sure. Case. Well, no, no. I mean, I think if if we put them on the scale, and if we say that this was a feature that you know was something that allowed a particular member involved in the project to grow, then I think that would definitely be more valuable than the you know in the first instance the bigger picture. You know, we must you know uh, focus on this you know connection to the to the top. I, I think, and to, certainly it, um, the important thing is because that's a conscious decision. You know, ra rather than it being that uh, you know one has been overlooked and the other one, you know, is just oh, that's I've, I've gone I've gone in that direction. I th I think they both need to be on the table. I mean, the interesting thing about people learning is there's so many different components and things to learn. And thinking about them at the same time, like I mean, at the moment in the local supports, you know, we're we're, we're trying to get this thing out for this customer, and like Raphael's p pointing out, there are these you know uh, refactorings that you could make, and you know there are things where the code is not so good, and blah, blah, blah. yes. But like kind of, I, I have to stay, stay focused, and it's kind of. But yeah, particularly as you're learning, managing all of the different kinds of concerns and so on is extra, extraordinarily complicated. So yeah, I mean, it's kind of the key balance there is about when to bring yeah. in these, yeah. these things. We, we, we're trying to move on all fronts, you know, on all, yeah. on all, yeah. So yeah, yeah. and absolutely. So, but yes, I mean, out of, you know, in the bigger picture, I, I, I knew to, to start with that this wasn't the most important feature to, yeah, yeah. to, to work on, but. But we had resources, we had time yeah. over, and you know we felt that this is. Well, you're a rich um, project over there with website one. You know all these resources. Yes, goodness me. Ah, thank you very much. It's not that, I mean, we have people want, that wants to get involved. You know, and I, <laughs> yes. I just want them to, to have some meaningful tasks. No, and, it, and it's fantastic. And I mean, we're getting more people involved, and I and I'm very excited about. It. So yeah, mm -hmm. so I mean, um, 
No, absolutely. Well, let me let me leave you and leave the re recording to further discuss other website one issues, and I will get my beverage and I will come back and start absolutely. doing the uh, local support time meeting. Excellent. All right. Well, okay. could you could you have a look at the save button? Then I could. Can... Yeah, it was yes. on production. Uh, uh, no, it's uh, yes, it is on production. Yes, it is. Yes. It and is. that's a save button for. Um, if you if you edit a document. I've got to find something with a document. Uh, documents. Okay. Um, I'd have, probably have to log in first. Uh, okay, I did, uh, not this document. I have to edit an action, right? Okay, go yeah, on. you have to edit the document. Yeah. Mm, okay. Yes. So I'm looking at this save uh, button. Uh, wait a second. What the hell? Well, I thought I pushed it up to 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 I'll do it again. It is on develop. Um, I know it's for sure it's in development staging. So I I'm thought I'm not it, seeing it, it on develop at the moment. Oh, it's, hmm. I'll see. Wait a second. Okay, no, I don't. No. All right. Anyway, well, uh, okay, here we can. Sorry, we can. sorry. Wait, let's yeah, we we talk about this now and get back to you whenever nice we're. Nice All right. Sure. Uh, Catch you in a bit. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. What the fuck? Guys, did it get lost somehow? Let me just have a look here. Uh, web. Well, I wasn't it. Are you guys hearing me? Yeah, I hear yeah. you. All right. Yeah. All right. Because you all, you all went so co so quiet. Let's see here. Uh, meetings, meeting, edit. Uh, okay. Now I don't see anything here. Wow. So. Okay. For some reason, this is gone, and I don't know why. Uh, does it work on the local host? Um, um, wait a second. What happened? Oh gosh! I have to go through all the all the. Uh, No, oh, it's not there. What the fuck? I don't know. I, I don't know what, what happened really. I don't I don't know what happened. It must have been uh it should where, be the where, branch or, or the master branch. Now it's gone from all the branch all the branches. Let's see here. What do you that the change was done in uh, views uh show uh, documents show, right? Mm, yeah. Edit, edit, edit this guy. And we see. Working on queues five days ago. Oh, uh, Thomas, I found it. It's, huh? uh, it was go it's gone in the uh, second to last commit, which is called merging, merging with OG Master to resolve conflicts. Uh. And, and that's where it, it was deleted. All right. Okay. Yeah, Seconds because all right, I know what it is. It's, we we had a we had some some conflicts, and I, I I looked through the code before I merged, but I didn't pay enough attention to it. Uh, all right. Okay. So this one way to do is, do you still have this this feature branch, uh, Yarrow? Mm, let me check. Because we can we can we can fix this in two ways. We can either I can even revert the the merge that I've done in order to solve save conflict uh, solve some conflicts, or you can resubmit the, that code, you know, by pulling in the latest code first and then then submitting the a pull request again. But yeah, I have the branch. I have the branch. 
Okay, yeah. I'll do that. Is it? I'll do I that mean, if it's life. not too much, too much work for you, that would be the. Or I can. Uh, no, 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 that's that's no problem. It's only a few lines. So I'll merge. I will merge the latest develop, right, and yeah. then put the changes on top and do a pull request, right? To to develop. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, no problem. All right, great. I'm sorry about this. I uh, I thought I uh, I was uh, paying attention. I, I think I have that code as well, actually. But you know, if you do it, it will it will be great. Yeah, no problem. That's all. Don't worry. Mm. Okay, guys. Uh, just a quick. Uh, I was t talking to to uh, to Pete earlier today. We we good job on the create user profile. Uh, there are some small small flaws in it, uh, and I guess you guys will will address that. Today uh, and the thing is that if I go to, you know, I'm logged in here on on develop, and I can see the edit button. Uh, so if I click it, I can go go on and edit myself, and that's perfectly all right. The problem is that if I go to Sam's profile, I still see the edit button, and I still can edit myself, and that is not okay. All right. But Pete already knows this, so that's not much to discuss about. Yeah, to Thomas. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I I was working with Pete yesterday. Okay. Yeah, you you guys uh, can go ahead and have a look at this because this this particular edit button needs to be conditioned that you know first we have to check yeah. if user is signed in and then we have to check whether this user in the params is the same one that wants to be you know that is signed in, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, great. Uh, back to Pivotal. Uh, Yaro, I saw that you took, uh, you clicked start on two, two stories there, the one with YouTube and the one with GitHub. Uh, well, I clicked on the GitHub because we were just going to do that with Pete after we mm -hmm. finished this uh, user profile. And links to YouTube, yeah, I started doing that myself. And in fact, I, I have a it seems like really simple. You're breaking so up a little bit. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I I I wanted to have a go at this story, and I start looking at it, and then I realize, well, it it seems to be really simple to me, so I want to discuss this. What do we want? What do we want to have for this for this story? Okay. Um, the thing here is, as we discussed in the last scrum, this you know we we want to. List the uh, the profile. I, we we want to list YouTube clips on the profile page. But uh, what were we talking about? We were talking about having them having them uh, grouped in. Um, what was it? Where was it? Yes, Scrum and Pair Hook of Open Recent Pair Programming Sessions. Yes, you have to you have to access. All right, now I know. You have to access to that user's uh, YouTube clip clips, and you have to filter away everything that is not uh, marked as Hangout on Air. Mm -hmm. And that's potentially not that easy as you as you might potentially think. Perhaps uh, perhaps it is. Perhaps I, I try. I tried it last night, and it seems to be really easy. It's just okay. like. Um, uh, I get requests to YouTube um, uh, specifying the user, specifying the playlist if he has one, and specifying the tag. All right. Um, yeah, so I think it's just more the matter of, I mean, it's easy to, uh, what is it? It YouTube the problem and get a list of those things. But uh, the question is the matter of formatting. How do we want it? Do we want it just like links? Or do we want embedded videos? Well, I was I was thinking, and that's what we discussed yesterday. I think, or was I don't know if we, anybody took any notes in the, in the. I see that there is no tasks in the pivotal tracker, but uh, we were talking about uh, a model that pops up, you know, or uh, like a fancy box or something that uh, you can actually play this this video. Um, All right. All right. Uh, well, I'll be happy to pair up with someone. Uh, so I I know about how to cure YouTube and somebody who can you know do the fancy stuff with pop-up windows and embedded videos. 
Yeah. Because I have no idea about that. All right. Uh, okay. The, the, the thing is, that, uh, the, what I want us, you guys to do is that uh, I want you to uh, uh, to break up this. You know, since since if you take the lead on the YouTube, we want to deliver that, and we want to deliver the GitHub, uh, you know, commit count. On profile page, so there are, there are two different APIs that needs to be you know, researched and 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 uh, uh, and uh, you know implemented. And my idea was like you know I would like Pete to take the GitHub commit count and you to take the the uh, YouTube uh, API because my understanding is that the YouTube API is more complicated and I think that uh, that suits you more. Uh, you're saying that there it's easy and straightforward uh, so I don't know, you know, I, my, my understanding was that it was, it, I, I, I tried to do this with the gem and uh, you know, uh, and uh, with direct API calls and I in, in my prototype uh, and I never got it to work completely but then I ran out of time again so uh, Okay, okay, no problem. But By the way, the yesterday, me and Pete, or was it a couple of days ago, talking about the GitHub integration, and I ran into this really nice, what it looks, a really nice gem, which uh, provides all the a all the GitHub API wrapped in uh, in a gem, in a Ruby, in a Ruby thing. So that could be a, a good help. Okay. Yeah. Well. Uh, okay. But Brian, you were saying. Oh yeah, I think the complication with the YouTube thing is actually getting the right videos. It's easy to get a video, but I think looking for the right one might be the problem here. You don't want people's private videos to be popping up on the site, do you? So you have to be careful about that. I think. Yeah, it's 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 the tag tags uh, basically. You know that mm -hmm. I found a little little complicated to search on. It wasn't as easy as I thought. But you know, it is a get request, and I I agree with with Yara on this one. But but it's like you know. To take the user and then filter on 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 the tags is isn't that straight as straightforward as we, as we would like it to be, uh, I think. But anyway, uh, yeah. So uh, you guys go ahead and 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 figure out this. You know who's working on what. Who's because it's also good to 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 have a, a owner because then, you know, if he takes the lead on something, then he's kind of responsible for that. And uh, same goes for the other. You know, story if you take. Take a lead on it, uh, Yaro. So uh, okay, so um, then untick me on the GitHub commit thing. All right, you you and guys, uh, Pete, I you want to go in there and, and and change that? So Pete is not here. He's not. He no. left. Oh, no. I'm sorry. I'm talking to somebody. <laughs> it's not here. So I just change it. Uh, but I will talk to Pete later because we yeah, and you can you can you guys can you guys can can change that. And um, yeah, uh, Brian, uh, I s I noticed that you were working with Jeff yesterday. How yep. how's that work out for you? Um, I think it's we're making progress. Uh, we were doing the code refactoring for projects, documents helper. So I uh, the last I checked, I think they just got all the R specs green, and I think we're gonna move on to uh, the cucumbers next. All right. Yeah, because I had to take some time off yesterday because uh, I wanted to join the edit chat uh, hangout. Mm, mm, mm. All right. Uh, cool. Anything else? Anybody blocked with anything? No. No. Okay. Do you think it's worth me taking taking up another story or just helping everyone finish up? Because it looks like there's a lot of stories in the current current uh, log already. Yeah, you, we, we could we could uh, we have potentially quite a few chores and and the stories going on already. Um, yeah. So so we could we could uh, one thing that I, I potentially doesn't take so long time so long but could be important for us is that this, the sorting of documents children is is kind of odd right now. Okay. Uh, and if you have a look at the at the production. Um, let's see here our projects, and we go to website one, and we go to scrums. No, I mean we go of course to local support and go to client meetings. All right, I created those 
sequentially, you know, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you know, and uh -huh. still I get, you know, sorting on seven, ten, twelve, eight, fourteen. Oh yeah, I I know what the problem is because yeah. by default Rails uh sorts it by the updated time for some mm -hmm. reason, so okay. every time you edit a document, it's gonna go back to the top of the list. So it's that's a quick fix. I yeah. Yeah. I'll be able so to you can that. just you can just you know take care of that. It's here fix. So sure. Yeah. So that would be great. Uh, okay. Yes. 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 So. Okay. Mm. You guys hear me? Once again. Yeah, we hear you. Go ahead, Michael. Well, I was just wondering where I could jump in on the website one. Because I should check the tracker. Yeah, you could you could check the tracker and see if you if you wanna you know help out on any of the stories that are ongoing or if you wanna take a lead on, on something that is in the backlog right now. Uh, and uh, so, but but as as I was saying, telling Brian, and he said it himself, perhaps it's better for us to to pair, you know, pair up with guys uh, and get all the stories that are in the current sprint to to finish up first before we start on anything new. Sounds good. Mm. Does anyone need a pair? Sure. All right. I'm sure there's enough stuff going around. I think you're. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, could you help with the YouTube thing? Yeah, I, I'm happy to pay on YouTube or GitHub or anything okay. else. So, whatever. Yeah, the, it really makes sense for me right now just to pair with someone rather than take the lead because I haven't looked at the code base in a while. Mm. The, the big thing for us now is to get this, uh, this uh, our members uh, feature kind of done so so you know the, pro the profile uh, all, all the stories that has to do with the with the profile page uh, right. are, are, are prioritized so we can get, get it together because it's, it's potentially you know we have the, the creation of the profile we have the editing of you know links we have the YouTube and, and projects and github commits and stuff you know so, and it's all gonna be put together in one single view uh, that's gonna be fairly, fairly complex so it would be good if, if we could all Chip in and work on those stories. Sounds good. Great. Well, welcome to website one, then, Michael. Nice to have you with us. Okay, that would be this, and I'm done. Thank you very much, Sam. Do you want to take over again? Thanks. Yeah, uh, we got to work out what that magic formula that website one is that makes it so tempting as a project. Um, it's me. It's me, brother. I think it probably is. So just you know, we want to keep you. <laughs> we want to keep you. Thomas, just stay involved. That's all. That's all. Yeah, the big a. fantastic the big job. A and George, yeah. Um, right. Yeah. So there we go. Okay. So I'm starting a local support client prep session now. Uh, other people, I guess, are starting sessions on website one. Anything else? Sounds like that's a wrap. I'll, final final mention is as I was thinking that as we now kind of regularly fill out the Scrum, um, we might want to stream into like two scrums, so maybe like a rail scrum and a non-rail scrum, so like the local support website one would be in one scrum and other products would be in the non-rail scrum or some other kind of um, division to allow more of this to happen in parallel and people to sort of select which, uh, you know, which is the thing they're interested in at the moment. Um, anyway, just leave that, leave, I'll leave you with that thought and uh, maybe see you in local support uh, client prep or the local support meeting and otherwise I'll see you all at, uh, or there's some subset of you, uh, some super combination set at uh, the afternoon scrum. Sam, yes, Yara. Just one question. Yeah. Just one question. Um, the latest pull request. Well, the first, the first, the first and latest pull request we have done their homeworks uh, repo um, was like right. uh, uh, for uh, for auto graders was like a proof of concept that yes. that thing should work. Yeah. Now we have refactored it quite a lot. Yeah. And um, and I want to do uh, well. And this what we have now. This should have been the first pull request. So. Uh, I cannot really merge it when I when I click the merge button now. It says you, it cannot be merged automatically. Could I ask you, you just to? Well, what you need to do is then you need to pull the, the current develop into that thing and you know make the, and handle the merge. 
I have. I have. Right, sure, right. I have. Okay, I'm, but so having done I'm, that, I'm, then you shouldn't uh -huh. get conflicts. If you've done that correctly, then you shouldn't get conflicts. Well, that's where. Um, yeah. But okay. Uh, I mean, I was, I was, uh, I wanted to ask you to sort of pull that in to replace what we had in the first pull request. Yeah, that's not uh, easily done by me, and I, I must now do the local support client prep. So to, uh, I, right, I would, okay, I would okay, say I'll, take another pass to see that you've you've done the merge effectively, and otherwise we can look at this, uh, you know, after the next scrum. We can sure, look at right, it together okay. uh, before we start on website one. Okay. Oh, okay. good stuff. Yeah, look at it with my nice one. All right, thanks, guys.